Hey folks, it's Painting Diary time, week 11 for 2021, and uh, let's get into what I've painted this week. So, as you're looking at here, this is the Stark Ladies. We have, I just want to move my coffee out of the way before I knock it all over. We have Sansa Stark and Catelyn Stark. This is, you know, when she was still pretty and not a complete zombie. Um, and then at the back here, we have Grey Wind. This is one of the direwolves. This is Rob Stark's direwolf. Not Sansa's direwolf, Lady. I'm not even sure if Lady is actually in the game or not. Might have to go check that out. But anyway, this is, uh, again, for the, um, oh, what's it called? The Song of Fire, Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. And these are the Stark characters. There's still one more character, Rob Stark. And then, of course, John Umber. Um, to do, but they're coming up next. These are again for the Kaiser from modeling it for Advantage, and uh, yeah, they're pretty good. Um, there's nothing too fancy to say. The miniatures are nice, nice and clean details. Um, the the interesting bit is um, this is by Dark Sword Miniatures, who are well known for um, really clean, crisp um, miniature designs, but also less heroic if you like i mean i don't know if you can tell but um the hands the mouth the face it's much smaller than you would find if you were looking at something else i'm trying to have a look around to see if i've got another miniature close by um like see for example this is a 28 mil from fireforge and the face or the head is twice as large um because of the proportions and uh, that's not a it's not a bad or a good thing in my opinion it's one of those things you know um when you're painting miniatures to paint a face and a head slightly larger heads easier to paint um when you you know uh, painting smaller heads and smaller faces they tend to be tougher to get details into them they still need a couple more basic details but like i've done with all the rest of the figures that i've I'm getting to them to this point, so they're basically 95% done, and then I'll come back in once everything is to this perspective, and then add all the eyes and final details, and then ship them back off to the Kaiser. Anyway, that's the first thing done for this week. Let's move on to the next thing. So what you're looking at here is Gloomhaven figures. I haven't got my light right properly today, but... Um, I mean, you get the general idea. These four here are from the Jaws of the Lion set. That one over there is an expansion. Um, I can't remember what the expansion is called. But uh, just a little background before we get to the miniatures. Gloomhaven is obviously a massive board game. Made loads of money on Kickstarter. Tons and tons of people love it. It's the number one game on Board Game Geek, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least top three last time I checked. And my commission painting services really hit the forefront um i painted up the original six characters uh for the kickstarter when uh Cellifer games were running it originally and uh one of my friends did a um a how to play video and used the figures in that and since then obviously he put my name up as the person who painted it and ever since then i've been inundated with these figures uh, which is obviously fantastic. It, it made my business boom and got my name out there and more and more people contact me now on a regular basis to do Gloomhaven. I've done so many sets, maybe, <laughs> oh, I can't even think how many sets I've done. 50, 60 maybe even, I don't know. And that's I'm obviously very appreciative of getting the work and obviously getting my name out there and hopefully... People are enjoying the figures they painted, and I painted for them. But the flip side is, I really, really dislike these figures. <laughs> and I'm not just speaking of these ones particularly, I'm the whole range. Because in my mind, it's um, someone comes up with artwork, they do the artwork for the game. So, for example, this lady, this figure over here will have, like, you should see the artwork for this. In fact, I might put up a picture here of the artwork. And then you can maybe get an idea of what I mean. So they make the artwork. And then they send the artwork to the sculptors. And the sculptors then make a figure based on the artwork. 
um, which is not unusual, but they make it almost, they try and make it as close to the art as possible, which isn't, and also I feel like the people who are making these sculpts aren't exactly, um, they're not what you might call normal sculptors, you know, the people who sculpted with green stuff and putty and, and uh, modeled without 3D, so they're literally doing it by CAD. And, oh man, they're just not nice figures to paint. The details are sort of smudgy. The um, dimensions are very static. It's just, they are boring figures to paint. And there's like a sort of a, like every time I get a set of Gloomhaven in, I'm like, yeah, hey, I got work. Yeah, oh, it's Gloomhaven. <laughs> I know it sounds very ungrateful, but it's just one of those things. As a painter, I'm like, ugh. On the flip side, I've painted so many of these by now that it doesn't take me that long to paint them because it's, it's the same. You have to do it the same color scheme every time because the people want it similar to the art. Anyway, so these are the expansion figures. Um, again, they're okay. I don't know what I. I mean. Look at this, you see, see the, under his hat there. In the artwork for this dude, he's got no face. He's got like a kind of like a Rorschach beady style face um, with just dimensions added in. So it's just a, like I've had to paint in the detail because there isn't any. There, um, I mean, this dude is so small and then you should see that you see in the artwork how much details that they've had. On the artwork and then try to force fit it into the models it's just crazy and then of course a model that's completely red on artwork looks cool but a model that's completely red on a miniature is dumb <laughs> it looks boring i know I'm, I'm being silly but anyway i just thought i'd give you guys my opinion on these figures um you know some figures i enjoy painting some figures i don't and it's obviously different for every people people can like whatever they like i'm just saying that i'm not a massive fan of the gloomhaven figures and it's i i guess that's also one of the reasons why i don't play gloomhaven and it's probably a great game it's just i i keep looking at these figures and because he's gone out of his way to make similar but uh, different tropes in the fantasy world it's just it doesn't appeal to me anymore <laughs> just lost all hope of any uh, wanting to play it Ah, okay, enough of my ramblings. Let's move on to something else I painted. Alright, so I don't have the physical models anymore as they've gone back to TT Combat, but these are some ogres from the current Kickstarter. Uh, I, I suppose we could call them man eaters, as they'd probably actually be more appropriate, but obviously they're similar to the Games Workshop 6th um, edition or old school fantasy Warhammer. Uh, ogres where you had like different ogres from different realms in the old world the same sort of thing yeah uh, you've got a knight you've got a witch hunter you've got a sort of uh, arabic uh, fishing ogre these are all obviously female ogres and um they're actually i actually quite enjoyed painting these i painted the knight like the artwork they had like they had on the kickstarter they had um a sample of a of what it would look like in art form so I, I copied the color scheme from that the witch hunter i added my own little flair to i thought it was a little unusual that the side of her hair is on fire uh, i actually think without that bit and it can easily be taken off it actually it's a nicer model um and then the the fishing one uh i painted this one actually similar color scheme to the persian halflings i did for the same company uh, so it sort of ties in together. So she comes from that realm. The knight comes from the Bretonian realm, the Bretonian halfling realms, and so on. Yeah, uh, just a little bit of fun if you if you like adding it to like that. Um, yeah. So these these are pretty decent. I like them. I mean, they. I've never made a massive ogre fan, but the amount of different ogres that they do now. And the different ogres you can get from all different companies, you can have a really different sculpt for every every different ogre you want. I mean, I remember when the ogres came out uh, for Kings of War, uh, for Warhammer Fantasy, it was just you know like uh, 
like carbon copy ogre for every rank and file deed. Just a big fat ball deed. Uh, obviously, times have moved on and things have been added. Anyway, so that's the three ogres I've done this week. I did the five Gloomhaven figures. I did the three um, Stark characters. I've been working on some other stuff as well, um, which I didn't finish off in time for this video. So they'll be on next week's video. Uh, yeah, there you go. So that's what I did this week. I hope you guys enjoyed that, uh, my ramblings. So uh, see you guys next week.